sailing today here in San Diego once again. Let's uh, start sailing. Let's hoist the main. Okay. Come on. Okay. And one of the difficulties that I have when uh, sailing alone is that uh, the tiller continues to move and since no one's uh, navigating the, with the tiller, uh, it takes me off, off course and I have to come back every time to correct the course. Um, so what I decided was that I would sail down the channel uh, westward the winds are blowing southeasterly and so it gives me the opportunity to sail on a beam reach um, I've already hoisted the mainsail and I will hoist the jib in a second as soon as I can get everything tidied up the conditions are beautiful at a it might get a little chilly in a few hours and so I brought my jacket just in case. The, the wind is forecasted to be, to be blowing at nine knots. And that's more than enough wind for this small boat. This thing will go with half of that. It's nice and nimble. So, Ah, there you go. That's full sail. I'll go ahead and uh, unfurl the jib in a second. Okay, it's time to unfurl the jib. Uh, I will unfurl it as soon as I get a second. I am going to go ahead and unfurl the jib. And so we will increase our speed. As you can see, this gets pretty intense. I hope you guys are able to see how much more speed we gain by unfurling the jib. Uh, I can probably, I can even go faster. I'm just a little reluctant, even though there's a, a sailboat ahead of me that is going twice the speed of this boat, this sailing vessel. Um, but you know what? I am alone and given that I'm alone, I say we really give it, give it a bit of uh, push on the gas pedal, on the wind pedal, on the sail. So if I bring in the mail, the main a little more, I gain a little bit more speed. Further up ahead, there's a boat that's healing. Uh, quite a bit. The boat's going far faster than this boat. That's the Marines or the Navy SEALs. Yeah. 
40, 50 degrees tilted. It's leveling out a bit more, but as the wind increases, it heals a bit more. And the wind is slightly off starboard. Anytime I feel like the boat is overpowered, I let go on the main. That's how the instructor taught me. And I'm simply regurgitating what I'm doing here. At this speed, we're at this speed, we're going to be in the Pacific Ocean in no time. I, if that happens, then we'll, I'll go ahead and take the boat towards downtown San Diego. I also just, I'm just noticing that the, uh, that the outboard engine is down with the propeller in the water. And it just occurred to me that if I lift the outboard engine that I might gain a little more speed. I'm sure this is obvious to some of, some, some of you professionals, not to me. I will go, I don't want to get too close to the rocks here on the left on uh, off of port. I'd rather uh, make my way towards the middle of the channel. However, I'm sailing upwind and to do so will require me to tack. So I will go ahead and tack. That was not a stellar job at all. And the current is pushing me the other way. Ah, shit. Ugh. As you can see, it says danger there. And so, I really want to make an effort to get the heck out of this area. Unfortunately, it's not that easy as of right now. Okay, there you go. I just don't like to hear the uh, jib slamming so hard, but in this case, I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to have to bear with it until I can get myself out of this danger zone. Well, at least not to get too close, not get too close to the danger zone is what I meant to say. Uh, should probably put down my sleeves to avoid getting sunburned. I'm a mestizo, a little sunburned. Doesn't do us too much, too much bad. I lost all the audio on the footage because my road, my my uh, Kamika mic ran out of battery. So as far as sailing is concerned, it's been a beautiful sailing here in San Diego. It's been beautiful sailing here in San Diego. As far as 
audio technology and videography it's been a horrible day my mic gave out on me and so I lost all of the footage that I had well I didn't lose the footage but I lost the audio for the footage when I was sailing down through the channel and that's unfortunate because it was quite a, an adventure and I guess what I'll do is recap a bit of everything after I lifted up the jib I started sailing down the channel and uh, the, wind re the wind really picked up I was healing quite a bit on several occasions I really had to uh, depower the boat because it was quite overpowered with the amount of wind that was coming in, coming in. Uh, the forecast was nine knots I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and believe that was that was what I was seeing I don't know what the gusts were at but um, I'd had to de depower the the boat and I found into some difficult areas by far the most difficult part of the of sailing down the channel is turning around and it was fine and I was able to turn the boat around before exiting the channel into the Pacific Ocean because the uh, towards the end of the channel obviously it opens up into the Pacific Ocean and and so when every time I've you know went into op I've gone into open waters I've always if I was over if I was overpowered in the channel once I reach open waters the gusts seem to uh, increase much more and I've always been caught up in wind there and so I don't even go there anymore I just turn the boat around uh, the however and so that's what I did however the the thing that happened was that I the boom was uh, slightly loose now I had I had um, I had brought it in quite tight but not tight enough that it didn't ha it's, that it didn't have any slack it had some slack and when I went to jive or turn the run the boat around therefore changing the jib uh, or tacking or diving um, the boom swung the other way now I like I said I didn't give it too much slack so it didn't hit me but I gave it just enough to give me a square and in fact it might have been able to hit me had I uh, had I not been leaned over and uh, but now that you know um, experiences like that really remind me that I need to be more uh, prudent in my uh, sailing I try to be as much as possible I I do what I can I try to prepare uh, but uh, you know experiences like that about the only benefit obviously you want you want to learn from other people's experiences but at least what I learned was that I need to tighten up the boom there's a the instructor told me or told us I should say a story of Boston Mariners um, or sailors I should say I don't want you guys to confuse it with uh, I don't know the baseball team I think that they uh, sailors going from San Diego to Boston would stop by Point Loma uh, to pick up ballast uh, ba and for them the ballast was rocks and they would use that to uh, obviously to use it as ballast for the boat boat and ballast is weight that allows the boat gives the boat uh, uh, balance and uh, and uh, prevents it from flipping over and all these other technical things but it's necessary for a boat um, and so that's where the name ballast point comes from uh, in California there's a brewery if you're not never been to it it's called ballast point brewery uh, there's one in Long Beach which is the one I like to go to um, but yeah uh, just I thought it was interesting and so I thought I'd share in case you didn't know and there's it's also he also mentioned that if you go to Boston you'll find that there are homes with sand rocks imported from San Diego so that's pretty cool uh, it's also really nice to see the seals uh, they're always lounging you know anytime you're sailing you're very likely to see seals lounging around the uh, buoys 